Hello everyone! Hello. Hi. Good morning, how is everybody doing this morning? Good. Good. Are we awake? Yes. Woo! Yeah. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> uh, so how many of you were not here last night? Okay, good amount of you. Um, so, uh, first off, thank you, Pastor, again for having us. It's oh, been yes. a blast. We had a great time last night, and all of you that were not here, you're a bridge treat. We're going to have more fun today. Uh, so we are New Life Drama Company. We're a young adults traveling drama ministry. We preach the gospel through drama 355 days out of the year. Wow. Yeah, the other 10 days out of the year, we go home for Christmas. But that's the only time that we go home. The rest of the year, we're traveling, wow. we're ministering wow. anywhere that the God will open up the door. So that's churches, nursing homes, soup kitchens, prisons. I've done skits at McDonald's before. Uh, wherever we have the opportunity, we want to minister to people. So with that being said, we travel all over the place, and our ministry is based out of Scottsdale, Arizona, but none of us are from there. So I want to invite my team up, because we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. Amen. Hi, guys. My name is Charity, and I'm from Zanesville, Ohio. Hey, guys. My name is Sam, and I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Good morning, guys. My name is Melvin, and I'm from State College, Pennsylvania. Rachel, and I'm from Waco, Texas. Hello, you guys. I'm Samantha, and I'm from Fitzgerald, Georgia. And my name is Becca, and I'm from Orlando, Florida. So, a couple of things before we start. First off, when you came in through the doors, you may have noticed a table with some t-shirts on it. That's our t-shirt table. All of the proceeds that go to that table go to gas in our van and food in our bellies. That's what keeps us going from place to place to place. So any way that you want to donate there and get a free t-shirt through our, your $20, $25 donation, whatever that happens to be, uh, I want to thank you for that because that will get us to our next stop. Uh, beyond that, we also accept monthly partners if the Lord lays it on your heart. Now that would be $5, $10, whatever. Uh, but of course, that's if the Lord lays it on your heart. We would also be blessed in that manner. Uh, last thing, we have recruitment going on all the time. So if you're between the ages of 18 and 25, or you know somebody that's between those ages, come talk to us because we are always recruiting. We have to have people in order to keep our ministry going because if there's no people, guess what? There's no ministry. Yeah. Oh, come on. So, uh, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pray and then we can get started. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you so much for today. God, I thank you that we are awake and alive and ready to have an amazing time to worship you this morning in a new and awesome way that we can glorify you. Lord, that we can glorify you with our voices and with our bodies and with our minds and our hearts, God, with every part of us. Lord, that we are dedicating every moment of today to you. So I thank you so much, God, for what you're going to do today. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 So the first, start, the first skit that we're going to start off with is called Ways Not to Use Your Bible. Ways not to use your Bible. Your Bible has a lot of stuff in it. It's a lot of things you can do with it. There's a lot of things you shouldn't do with it. Like one, your Bible is not a coaster. <laughs> oh, this is some good old sweet tea, but the glass is so sweaty and I have nowhere to put it. Oh, look, a coffee table. Way! Okay. 
Oh, not much, just uh, these hammies. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, I was reading in the book of numbers and I realized that I don't have yours. <laughs> Why would my phone number be in the Bible? I don't even have a cell phone. Doesn't it say in the Bible, make a joyful noise unto the Lord? And that's 
what to do, honey. You make a noise. Oh, really? <laughs> my wife wasn't telling me about my Maybe thing. Maybe it's oh, so oh, nice. Oh, oh, really? Oh, no, no. You didn't flip the bottle. Donna. No. Donna. No. Listen, Donna, walk with me, all right? Remember when we'd go bowling and uh, I would roll that perfect strike and you would kiss me right here on the cheek? That was you? Yes, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we haven't gone bowling in forever and uh, it's actually raining outside, so why don't we go bowling today? Today? Right now, listen. Go get the two pound bowling balls and I'll get the car and we'll go bowling today! What? After church? Dillard! I'm not going to church, oh, Donna. Yes, you are! No, I'm not. Dillard, you're going to church. All right, I'll give you another reason then. No. Well, I'm not going to church. Oh, I know. We never, and I mean never, get out on time. <gasps> Dillard! You know it is up to the Holy Spirit himself as to when we get out of church. Oh, really? Well, the Holy Spirit better get himself a watch and let noon roll around. I'm hungry and there's a lot at the buffet. You don't need a What buffet. are you saying, Donna? Ten push-ups a day is it enough for you? What did her to do twelve? Oh, really? Oh, right. Because I can never, that I've ever satisfied. Donna, Donna, Donna. Listen, I give you three. Three excellent reasons. Excuses? Reasons why I'm not going to church. And you haven't given me one. One reason why I even should. You want a reason? Oh, I want a reason. Oh, I'll give you All a right reason. Then. Dillard, you're the pastor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we know that's not you, pastor. <laughs> Jezebel? 
Remind me of this Jezebel. All right, all right. Um, she has a uh, long blonde hair. Long blonde hair. Uh, the perfect teeth. The perfect. Uh, um, a great personality. A great personality. Do your eyes always get bloodshot when you like a girl? Oh, always. Every time they just water a lot. Oh, 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 she sounds fantastic. Where is she at? I gotta find her. Let me out of here. Where is she? Hold on. Get your cell phone out and call Jezebel. Alright, oh, okay. cell phone out. Talk to yeah. Jezebel. Yeah. Instead of God! Yeah, talk to Jezebel. God? Instead of God. I like, well, no, I'm, busy. Busy. Oh, I'm, I'm, busy. I'm such a good guy. No, I was just thinking, you know, later night we would yeah, talk to Jezebel instead of God. Hey, you know what, Jezebel? I'm gonna have to call you back, okay? Oh, man! First of all, what am I doing using the flip phone? It is 2019. That's your problem. That's your problem. Second of all, are you trying to get me to talk to a girl instead of talking to God? Yes. Life alert. you want to do. If you want to be boring, go ahead. <sighs> Alright, hold on. I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not boring. Oh, listen, new man. You're the most boring person I know. Help me up, help me up. <sighs> listen, new man, all your friends, you know, they know exactly what they're going to do with their life. They know what college you're going to, they know what girls they're going to marry. They even know what color bathroom tile their bathroom's gonna have. Oh, I don't even know if we're gonna have a bathroom. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So listen, that's why you need to come over here to this desk, this desk and you right need here. to talk, you need to write up a letter right. to the university. All right? Okay, right, right here? Okay, right yeah, here? Yeah. Okay. Seek counsel for man instead of God! Whoa! Whoa! Seek counsel for man instead of God! Whoa! Seek counsel for man instead of God. Old man. Oh, I will not find you. I'll tell you what. Oh, old man. Where are you? Old man. Old man. Oh. Pretty good. Are you trying to get me to seek counsel from man instead of Almighty God? Um. Yes. Well, I'm sitting 
a secret Oh, okay, Sarah. but you don't understand. I sit here every Sunday, so I'm gonna need you to move over. Um, well, I'm actually... No, but I'm gonna need... No, okay, no, no, no. Thank you! <laughs> but you really don't understand. I actually was... Okay, but you don't really understand. See, I sit here every Sunday. This is my seat. In fact, I have a routine, and I'll just share it with you. Every Sunday morning, I wake up at 6 o'clock. I put on one shoe, two shoe, hop in my Subaru, turn on the Christian radio to get in the mood for Jesus, park in my shaded parking spot, make my way to the church doors where I'm greeted by Gary the Greeter, and he says, It is such a pleasure to have you in service this morning, Miss Griffin. And I say, Oh, Gary, stop. I leave it down. Do you see? This is my spot, and I don't plan on moving. Uh, well, that's a nice routine and all. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, it's my routine. Well, morning. Oh, it's a, it, I'm doing great. It's good. Very nice Well, listen, uh, me and my wife, Cheryl, yeah, I'm talking to her. All right. She wanted, we were wondering if you want to come and sit with us this morning, since you always sit here all by your lonesome self. Well, I mean, you know, I sit here every Sunday. Oh, I know, I know. On purpose. Okay, yeah. well, maybe you can change it up a little bit. You know I'm not going to do that. This is my seat. I sit here every Sunday. Right. In fact, you obviously forgot my routine. Oh, so no, I'll I didn't forget it. I just like not with you. Every Sunday morning, I wake up at 6 o'clock. I put on one shoe, two shoe, hop in my Subaru, turn on the Christian radio to get in the mood for Jesus, park in my shaded parking spot, and my way to the church doors where I'm greeted by Gary the Greeter, and he says, It is such a pleasure to have you in service this morning, Miss Griffin. <laughs> and I say, Oh, Gary, stop. And I'm going to go down the road to see two. This is my spot, and I don't plan on moving. Oh, Miss Becca, that routine never gets old, you know. But the funny thing about this being your seat and all is that your name is not inscribed on the back. Yeah, it's not. It's not even there. You're right, but it doesn't need to be there because I sit here every Sunday. Well, Miss Miss Becca, um, Pastor didn't see me do this, but uh, can I entice you with some cookies? <laughs> She said no! I'll, I'll come back next week, oh, alright? Don't. I'll bring fresh cookies oh, this no, time. You don't need to do oh that. yeah, she I said no! <laughs> you should go sit with your friend. You think he's my friend? I don't think he has any friends. Uh, hey honey, I thought you said you were gonna save me a seat. Well I did. It's just she's really pushy, but I'll sit over there and you can sit here. Oh no no no. If, if I'm going to church, I'm gonna sit next to my wife. Uh, excuse me, miss. Uh, do you mind if I sit next to my wife here, please? Okay, what is wrong with you people? I sit here every Sunday. It's part of my routine. How about I just share it with you? Every Sunday morning, I wake up at 6 o'clock. Shoot, 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 hop in my Subaru. Turn on the Christian radio to get in the mood for Jesus. Bark in my native parking spot. Make my way to the church doors where I'm greeted by Gary the Greeter. And he says, it's such a pleasure to have you in service this morning, Miss Griffith. And I say, oh, Gary, stop. I make my way down the aisle. Road 2, C2, this is my spot. And don't wait a moment. So you're really not just going to move over one seat? No. All right, that's fine. You know what? It's not fine. It's people like you that get in the way. You know what? You Christians talk about being loving and all that. You're just a bunch of hypocrites. You know, baby, if you need me, I'll be in the car. I'm done. Oh. Sam, wait. for my husband to come to church. And he came today. But you wouldn't move over one seat? It's just a seat!
heart is to be perfect, we're going to lose sight of God's perfection and Jesus' holiness because He is holy and He is perfect in every way, shape, and form. And even if something bad happens, there's no reason that we should blame God for it because He has literally given us everything we have. So there's no reason we should act entitled to things when we're not. Amen. Um, this next skit is called Mary. He was two miles away. Two miles. And he couldn't come to save my brother's life. To think that I saved up a year's worth of my wages for this man. I bought him the best perfume that I could find. And I dumped it on his feet and dried it with my hair. My hair! And he couldn't come to save my brother's life. I thought that he loved us. I thought he was our friend. I thought he was at least Lazarus's friend. But when Jesus finally did show up, he was four days late. My sister Martha ran out to see him. And she said, Lord, if you had been here, you could have saved my brother's life. And then I hear that the master wants to see me. I ran out to see him. And I fell to my knees and I cried, Lord! If only you had been here, you could have saved my brother's life. And then Jesus said, Where have they laid him? Jesus, I don't know what you expect to find. But I took him to the too many ways because he is my Lord and I knew. And then Jesus said the most ridiculous thing. Jesus said, Roll away the stone. What for, Jesus? Weren't you listening? It's been four days. There's nothing left of my brother in there. It's just a body. His body stinks at this point. And then Jesus said, He will live again. I know. I know. I know we'll all live again. resurrection and the life. Though he were dead, because he believes in me, he will live again. And then my Lord, in a loud and thunderous voice, standing before the tomb, he declared, Lazarus, come forth!
your word. Lord God, we thank you that um, God, you show us, uh, you speak to us in different ways, God. And maybe uh, drama is a different way for a few people here, Lord God, but it's all right. It's all right. Uh, throughout your word, God, you spoke to, through parables and uh, illustrations, God. And this morning, Lord, I pray that you would not, uh, it would, wouldn't be my words, but your words right now. God, you would bless us, you would speak to us, and thank you for your sweet presence that's here, Lord God, your peace that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, who was all here last night? All right, all right, so quite a few of you guys. Uh, last night, Becca shared a very, very good message, a powerful, powerful message. Um, very honest, very very cut to the heart, it cut me to the heart. And uh, I'm going I'm to tag off of that a little bit. I'm going to talk about our, our, our identity. And those of you that are Christians that know the Lord, a lot of you guys had a lot of, a lot of years on me. Um, you've known the Lord for more, than, more many more years than I have. Uh, but there's something that all of us as Christians, as the old man, struggle with. Yeah. Um, the new man struggle with. We, we struggle with the old man, and we have to fight it off. And um, yes, God has saved us, and our eternity has changed. Uh, but we're still in the carnal flesh. We're still in this carnal, uh, carnal body. Same. And so we Amen. deal with the things around us, the world. And, um, and so I'm gonna, we're going to go through the Word, so a, few, a few places in the Word, that talk about that. And how do, we, uh, how do we accept God? How does eternity start now? Um, how do we change now, and, but yet still live in this world? How does it apply to our life? Um, before that, I want to share a testimony with you guys. Uh, those of you that were here last night, we did that one skit, I Surrender. And um, the one part where I played uh, Forgive Your Uncle. Um, I, you know, back at... Uh, Samuel, he was he was he was playing God, and he said, "You're gonna forgive your uncle." And I was, "All right, you know that's kind of weird. I, I don't know why." Um, and I, I've done forgive your father, forgive yourself, uh, you know, give up alcohol, give up your job, stuff like that. But I've never done forgive your uncle. And uh, in that in that time when God asked me if I love him, I said yes. Uh, he said, "I need you to forgive your uncle." And um, it was a true testimony. My sister Sarah, she's 21 years old, and uh, she was raped when she was four years old by my uncle. And uh, after the skit, after I said I can't, I turned around and I just broke uh, because I realized I'd never forgiven my uncle. And even though that it was something that, you know, uh, I love him and I want him to know Christ, I want him to know the Lord, um, me as an older brother that wants to protect my sister, protect my siblings, um, is something that I've never forgiven him. Uh, so last night was an amazing night. Lord, it's great to yeah. moving last night, and he, yes, he is moving today. Yes, Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to just share a little bit of my testimony. Um, I grew up Amish. You guys have a lot of Amish around here, yeah. I'm sure. Um, I grew up Amish in Pennsylvania, in the, on a dairy farm. Um, the Amish don't believe uh, salvation. They don't preach grace. They don't preach salvation. God is an Old Testament God, a God of wrath. Uh, they don't really know why Jesus is here, why he died on the cross. Um, everything that, you know, the, the gifts of the Spirit, the healings, um, the work of the Holy Spirit, everything ended when the Bible ended, uh, when, the, when the Scripture, when the last Scripture, when Revelation was finished. That all ended. It doesn't, it doesn't apply. It doesn't happen now. And so growing up, I seen God as a very uh, angry God. I was very hurt. Uh, my dad was very physically abusive to my mom and us kids. Um, I was the oldest, oldest boy. I have one older sister, but there's, there's ten of us in my family. There's eight younger siblings than me. And, um, but God was very, or my dad was very abusive to me, and so uh, I had a, had a, that's kind of how I seen God. And so uh, when I was eight years old, or ten years old, uh, my dad was saved, born again, um, miraculously born again. And uh, we started going to the And we started going to a Bible study, and we were there for two years, and then the Amish found out and turned us in. And we were excommunicated from the, from the church. Uh, we're shunned now. Um, we still live in the community. And after four and a half years, revival broke out in the community because of my dad. He reaches everyone. You know, He reaches all nations um, from all different dialects and backgrounds. And so... Um, so when I was, I was 10 years old and I was born again, and I, I, did, I still didn't really understand who God was, but I knew that I was a sinner and I knew that uh, He was a Savior, and I knew I needed Him. Yeah. And so I accepted Him in my heart, and uh, about a, a year later, or a half a year later, um, I went through a lot of sexual trauma. Um, my oldest sister and my cousin uh, were both very, uh, I, had, I was having sexual misconduct with them. 
uh, for a whole summer. And uh, my dad said, just push it under the rug. And um, it messed me up. And uh, I was afraid that, you know, uh, God has my family, but he doesn't have me because I'm broken. I'm not the accepted one. Um, and so for many years after that, I just tried to push it under the rug, push it away. Um, and it was very, it was very hard. Was like, and I, I rebelled. I went into drugs and the alcohol and um, rebelled against God. Um, for, but for all those years, uh, I, I thought that I had to clean myself up to come to God. Um, but it's, it's not. God accepts us right as we are. He changes us. And the, the desire for the sin that you once lived in fades away. And you see, you desire to be clean. You desire to be holy. You desire to commune with God. And so I wanted to share that. Um, I'm going to go. Well, first of all, I'm going to read 2, 2 Corinthians 5 17, which is from the New Manscape. Uh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Um, and then I'm going to turn to Matthew, and chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. Uh, and this story, a lot of you guys probably know, um, talks about when Jesus, when Jesus and his disciples were in the boat. And uh, it's interesting because they're his disciples. So they're not just believers. They're not just new believers. They're disciples. They know the Lord. They've seen God do miracles. They've seen Him move, and so you know, in my life, I'd seen I'd seen God do a miracle in my family. I'd seen Him do a miracle in my own life, and yet, and yet, uh, I felt that I was alone. Yet, I, I felt that He couldn't take me. But yet, I felt that I was too much. My sin was too great, and, uh, and so what I'm going to do is read in verse 20, 23. And when he was when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great uh, storm in the sea. And so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. Um, how many times do we, in our life, we don't run to the Lord until there's something going on, you know, like until we hit rock bottom? Um, disciples, they were disciples, and they were afraid. They ran to him afraid, saying, Lord, save us. And he said unto them, Why are you afraid? You have little faith. Then he arose, rebuked the winds in the sea, and there was a great calm. This, this 27 is really interesting, but the men were marveled, saying, what, what kind of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? And yet they'd seen him do miracles. Uh, he healed a leper before this. They'd seen, they were disciples. They'd walked with the Lord, and they asked, what kind of man is this, that even the winds and the waves obey him? How many times in our life, right now, in the situations, we all have situations. We all have uh, things that, that we worry about um, that are on our plate, and, uh, and we don't think God can take it. And we're, we're waiting, you know, we've got to handle it ourselves. Yet God is right there, ready to rebuke the storm, ready to rebuke the waves, and to silence them. And so in my life, you know, for a long time, until I was 17 years old, for about five years, I was carrying this hurt, this pain, this anger, this rebellion, all of it. And um, it's because I didn't understand that God can take me right as I am. And he can silence the storms in my life, silence the, the winds and the waves. And that's what he can do for you this morning, just like he did in that last skit. Uh, we're going to get set up for this next skit. And uh, it's going to talk about, uh, I love this skit. This skit is so powerful. Um, and I just want you to, the, the, you, you understand, the situation um, that you're carrying, that you're, you're worried about, uh, maybe it's yourself, maybe it's things about the future. Um, put yourself in a situation. God is a God of restoration. He restores fully. He fully restores. So this skit talks about that. Um, and it's a very powerful skit. So this skit is called Say Something. Thank you. Something 
at 35. If you all have your Bible, you can turn there real quick. I'll just read it. If not, um, find it real quick. Isaiah 35, verse 4. Um, God restores. He restores. What the world steals away, God restores. What you have stolen away from yourself, the regret that you have, God restores. The fear that you have about the future, God restores. God has it in His hand. In Christ, we are always victorious. Always. Always. Isaiah 35, verse 4. Say to them that are fearful, that are with a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even a God, even God with a rep recompense, He will come and save you. He will come and save you in your brokenness, like that skin. In your brokenness, He comes and He saves you. He desires you to grow and to change you, like that man that came. You know, the, the man wasn't a man. He was to take care of his family. Maybe there's some husbands in here that you really, you know, you look back, you regret taking, not taking care of your family, not caring for your children, right? But there's always a new start. God is a God of, He forgives, He restores, He restores. See, God doesn't, God takes us where we are, but He doesn't want us, He doesn't, he doesn't want to let us there. He changes us, He shapes us. Verse 5, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf, deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a, as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the deserts. Praise the Lord. Um, in Mark chapter 12, it talks about a widow and, and how uh, there, were, there was Jesus and his disciples and they seen this rich man come and give all, a lot of money, you know, and um, you know, I don't know how much money, but a lot of money. And this widow came out and put two widow mites, not even worth, I think it's like worth two pennies, not even worth two pennies nowadays. And uh, so this morning, um, I'm going to have my team to come up here in the front and uh, we're going to give a call of salvation because everywhere we go, uh, we don't want to, just because we're in a church, doesn't, we want to give the opportunity for you to come save and make him Lord and Savior of your life. Um, but I want to I challenge you guys. In Mark chapter 12, like that widow, she gave everything she had. And so this morning, as people, as Christians, of all walks of life, of all situations going on, let's be like that widow and give everything we have to Christ. Let's see, come to the cross, meet him. And uh, we're here. We'd love to pray with you. There's nothing special about us, but God has called us to come here for such a time for this Sunday to pray over you guys, to minister over you guys. Feel free to pray over us. We love prayer. But we want to pray with you guys. Today we head for Indiana. Um, we want to pray with you guys and encourage you. Um, so as the widow did, let's pour out everything we have, our heart, our brokenness, our soul, our mind, um, our situations in our life. But before that, um, can I get every head to be bowed, every eye closed? And um, everyone just repeat this prayer after me. This is just a prayer of declaration, a prayer of surrender to the Lord. Uh, and this prayer, uh, it, it's salvation, it says in Ephesians 2, by grace through faith we're saved. Not, but none of our own good works. Because God uh, sent his son to live a perfect life because you and me can. And so he sent his son uh, to die on the cross, to, be, to raise, be raised to life on the third day. To give us victory over life. To give us life more abundantly. So everyone repeats this prayer after me. Uh, Dear Lord. Thank you for what you've done on the cross. Thank you for saving me. For my sins. Forgive me. I turn to you this morning. And I ask you in my heart. To be my Lord and Savior. To change my life forever. Come into my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. With every head still bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If that's the first time you prayed that prayer or you're rededicating your life back to God, just raise your hand real quick. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Alright, everybody, you guys can open your eyes. I'm going to pray and then the altars will be open. Um, We'll just worship the Lord, take some time to thank Him for what He's done in our life. Take some time to thank Him for what He's doing in our life. Amen. Uh, Lord God, we thank You for this morning. We thank You, Lord, that even though, um, God, whatever baggage we brought in, Lord God, that we can set it free. We can set it at the cross, Lord God. We can let You strip away the old man, strip away the sin that we so easily besets us, God. Lord God, I pray right now as Your Spirit falls heavy in this room, Lord God, You would speak to us. You would refresh, Lord. You would encourage, you would equip, 
Lord. Give us purpose, God. Give us desire. Give us zeal, Lord Jesus, to serve you, to know you more. God, I pray that Holy Spirit, you would open our eyes to the word, Lord, that it would feed us, that we'd feast on your word, Lord Jesus. God, I pray for the lame and the, the, the ones that are uh, sick, God. The bones that aren't uh, healed, Lord God, I pray in Jesus' name this morning they would walk out healed, yes. restored. The hearts that are broken, God, that would be restored. God, there would be pe people that haven't had peace in years, God, that would walk out with peace in Jesus' name. We invite you, Lord, right now in this time to come to sit with us, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, can I get everybody that can stand up if they can? And uh, we're just going to worship.